All right. The long awaited and dreaded trig limits. I mean, you know, I, I said in class a thousand times, it's a huge pain in the ass. It's confusing. It's frustrating and annoying, but it is what it is. I wrote the two rules. Now I wrote the top rule a little differently in class. I gave it to you as sine X over X is one, but you know, the rule applies for anything that looks similar to that. And I'm giving you the rule. There, there is a proper mathematical way to do it, but it's nonsense and it's unnecessary. So we can do that fast. And then we had the rule for cosine. So now this is very important. That's why I put these together. Here, X goes to zero. So that rule applies. You take these. Now, this is of critical importance because I've seen some real dumbass crap. If I see you do this, you say, oh, I'm going to cross out the X's and then nine divided by three is three. That is the stupidest nonsense. This is an angle. That is not sin times nine X. This is the sign of the angle nine X. This is not anything you can mess with. This three does not divide into this nine in any way, shape or form, unless you use that rule. So this, if I see you do anything like this, this is nonsense and you are not going to get credit for it. I told you a, over B, all I have to see you do is this. Just take the numbers in front of the letters, pull them aside. You cannot put them in the front. You don't put nine here. That's not true. That is not an identity. The sine of nine X is not equal to nine times sine. That's false, all right? This doesn't work, it's nonsense, but this is easy. Use the rule that I've given you. Okay, now this one, you might look quick and say, oh, one and three, I'm going to use that rule. And then you get it wrong because this has to go to zero and it's not. Pi over two is 90, but put pi over two here. Wherever you see X, put pi over two. The side of 90 is one. Look on your chart. This is three pi over two. I will not be pleased if you leave it like this. Why? Because you're in calculus. You can handle a mixed fraction here or complex fraction. Keep, change, flip. So just flip this up over to the top. Two goes up, three pi stays down. That's it, it's gonna do a bunch more. Okay, the torture continued for three. This looks a lot like that. X going to zero, good. So, but on the top, you know, you have fours there. They each have a four. So you have to take the four that's in each one and factor it out into the front. You divide it away from what's there. Your, your goal in this problem is to make it look like that. Take this two and put it underneath the four. You see what you just did? You just created the one you have. I know that this one is zero because that's just a rule. And then over here, you have a two. Well, good for you. But two times zero <laughs> is zero. So yeah, there's a little work to show there. You, you can't just tell me, oh, it's zero. It, it kind of looks like that one. You have to justify it. You have to make it look like the one that's there and then say, all right, two times zero is zero. We'll see you did that fine. Now, this one, you may think, I don't like the way my zero looks. You're like, oh, you, you said to do A and B and just take the numbers in front. But this is, th this is not X on the bottom. You know, if, if it was this, yeah, you could take the six and the four but it's not. So, you know, try to plug in. Six times zero, right? Put zero for X. Six times zero is zero. Four times zero is zero, right? Just replace the X's with zero. The sine is zero is zero, but the cosine is zero is one. It's not zero. So you don't get zero over zero. You don't get BS. You get zero, legit. So a lot of times on these, if you plug in, it's going to work. Legit. You don't get zero over zero. You don't have to do any funny business. You don't have to use one of the special rules. It just works. So that's the first thing you should always try. Plug in. If the bottom isn't zero, it's okay. Didn't pause. All right. Last pause misfired on me. Sometimes the pause button don't work. And then I think that it's paused and it's recording. And then you get to watch me erase the board and then not do any problems. It happens. So the next two, now you look at that and you say, oh, I, I know it's zero. That's the same one. It's not the same one. You have to watch very carefully. 
X is not going to zero, X is going to pi. So all you can do is put pi for X and just keep your fingers crossed. But if X is not going to zero and there's an X on the bottom, then it's fine. You just can't have zero on the bottom. Who cares? Now, cosine pi, you're going to look on the chart. It's negative one. Now you're taking away whatever cos pi is. So it's one, it's not one minus one. It's cos, cos pi is not one, negative one. So you do one, take away negative one, which is one plus one. So you get two on top, you can find the bottom. I mean, all you had to do was pop the damn pie in there. You just bang it out. It was nothing to do. It's a stupid problem. It's easy. Don't, you know, don't mistake it. Now, this one is under this category. A, B. X is going to zero. Yay. So just take the numbers. Don't do nothing cute. Don't do nothing fancy. I'm allowing you to use that rule. So don't, don't do this long convoluted stuff to get that answer when you don't need to. If I'm giving you that rule and telling you to use it, then use it. It's okay. All right, so they're gonna get a little more advanced and I'm, I'm gonna start jumping around a little bit and skip a few that I, I know I wanna ask you. Now, this one looks a lot like the rule. It's just upside down and it's flipped. So then the question is, would it still work? And why wouldn't it still work? It does work. So you can still just take the numbers in front and I did write that rule in class that if you had AX over sine BX, you can still just take A over B. It, it works whether it's flipped over or not. So just take the number. One, number in front of X, number in front of X. All right, again, I'm allowing you to do that. Now, this one is a little more complicated. You can't quite do this. You can say, oh, there's a three there. This is sine squared. Now, I know that sine squared x is sine x times sine x, right? That's what it means to square something. When you square something, you multiply it by itself. But I don't have sine x. I have sine 3x. So I have to square that. So, I mean, I got to write limit. I'm, I'm being uh, cheap here. So it's going to be sine 3x times sine 3x. Now, I really want to use that. So I want to take my x2 and write one of them here and one of them here, right? x and x is x squared. Sine squared is sine times sine. The three x just goes along for the ride. Now, yes, I'm supposed to have lin there. I'm bad. Bad teacher. You're horrible. Lin x goes to zero. It's supposed to be there. This one, I take the numbers in front. Three over one, which is three. Same thing there. Three over one, three. And you multiply it. You get nine. So I have to see this one. There's, there's justification. You have to take the sine squared and split it up. Take the x squared and split it up. So that each one looks like the identity one that we have. It has to match that. All right. So this, this is the work that I have to see. Don't be bad like me and not write the limb. Make sure you write the limb. I'm going to do a couple of more tricky ones. All right. I'm going to do this one alone quick because it, it's a weird one. And, you know, it looks kind of a lot like that. And you know, your instinct, if I didn't know any better, I would want to just take that three and that two. But the thing is, like, like if you had like say two over three, and then you had like say five over three. I mean, I remember showing you this in class, right? Keep, change, flip, right? You would flip this one over, right? You'd have two thirds divided by five thirds. You would flip the second one over and change it to times, right? And the threes cross out. So you can be more sophisticated. This three on the bottom and this three on the bottom are the same. They would cross out and you would just get two over five. Why am I showing you this? Because you can take this fraction and take the one on the top and just put an X under it. Take the one on the bottom and put an X under it. This X would eat that X. So you say, you can't do that. You can't just put these X's there. You can put them there. It's like, it's a little gimmick. It's a trick. There are really invisible X's there, but you don't even need them there. Now, this one, boom, it's three. This one, boom, it's two. So it did work. You can just take the numbers that are in front of the X's. 
there's like these little invisible S's that you that you never see. You can just throw them there. It's, it's a bullshit. It's a bullshit trick. But it's it's again, it's why the rule works. It's all back to that rule. This again and again and again. It's just you take the numbers in front of the X's. I mean, you could show me that and show me that you're really sophisticated and fancy and understand. Or you can just tell me it's three over two. I know I take numbers in front. That's like the rule. That I, didn't, I, I wrote that on a board in class. I didn't write it here, but you know, it was there. We talked about it. All right, now I'm, I'm going to grab a few from the homework problems and, and do them because some of them were a little trickier and I, I wanted to see. Most, most people did this fine. Now, this looks like nothing, but tan has an identity that you can replace it with. I told you that tan is like, oh, it's one over cotan. Yeah, that's nice. But one over cotan is not going to help you here. You want to replace tangent with sine over cosine because that's what it's equal to. And then that cosine just kind of hangs out there waiting to see what happens, right? So all you do is replace tangent with sine over cosine. Everybody else stays the same. 4x stays the same. Cosine stays the same. But this is a product. It's tangent times cosine. And once you put sine over cosine for tan, you can just go, cha, press out the cosines. So now they're gone. And who are you left with upstairs? Sine x. Who are you left with downstairs? 4x. And that looks a lot like our favorite buddy over there. Take the numbers in front. Don't make it harder than this. Sometimes they keep saying the same damn thing, but that's what you do. So you had to make a substitution with the trig identity, simplify a little bit, and then keep going and see, I'm gonna do that in the next one I do. All right, so a little more complicated. Some of you really fudge this very badly when you, when you did it in your homework, but whatever. So again, you see sine, you leave that alone. It's sine divided by tan, right? That's what you have, sine divided by the line tan. But I can, I can replace tan with sine over cosine. So you do. And then keep change flip. Stays the same, change the times, flip it over. That's what I'm going to do. I mean, I could save myself spacing. Just erase that and do it, but so keep change flip, keep change flip, and now cha cross out the signs. They're gone. All you get is cosine. But how does that help? There's no fraction anymore, so stick the damn zero in there. Cosine of zero degrees is one. Yay! So again, make a substitution with a trig identity that you know, and then just bang it out, right? Simplify, plug in. All right, so this was 27. Now, when I first look at this, I say to myself, oh, I don't think this is zero. I'm gonna try plugging in because I don't, I don't think it's zero over zero. I'm gonna put pi over two up there, and I'm gonna put pi over two here. Now, you gotta be careful. The bottom angle is two. So you're doing pi over two times two. So those twos cross out. Cosine of 90, shit, it's zero, okay. Sine, now this two and this two crossed out, so you got pi, you got 180, 180 degrees. Sine of 180, it's also zero. Don't. All right, I tried to plug in, it failed, damn it. I don't know what else to do, what do I do, what do I do? Maybe I cross out the x's. No, don't do nothing, dumbass. I did teach you an identity for the sine of 2x. This identity was on the sheet. It is on your trig formula sheet that I posted for you. This is two times sine x times cosine x. That is just an identity that I gave you. That's called the double angle identity. So now you're golden. Cross out the cosines. Be careful. Cosine divided by cosine is one. Don't forget the one on top. So you get one over two sine x. I'm going to be lazy here. x goes to pi over two. So now try putting pi over two and keep your fingers crossed. So let's see, sine of pi over two, right? The two is not there anymore. I use that identity. So it's just sine x now. So when you put pi over two there, you just get pi over two. But the sine of pi over two, the sine of 90 is one. Woo, two times one is two. They get a half. So yay, it worked out nice. Okay, I think I try to do one more. Okay, this, this is one that I messed up on the sheet. And I meant it to be like this. So this was number 12, modified. See how it says fixed? 
I corrected the one that was there because the one that was there was effed up and not it didn't come out the way I wanted it to. This one will. So I corrected it. This on the sheet you had four X on top and this was on the bottom. So after I've made this adjustment, right? You're gonna leave four X alone. You have to replace everybody. I know that tan is sine over cosine. So cotan is that flipped over. So it's gonna be cosine over sine. And I remember, put the little dots, right? It's multiplication. Now I remember that secant goes with cosine and they're partners, right? They're related by a flip. They are reciprocals. So when you see secant, you're gonna put one over cosine. Aha, both sides cross out. All right, put a little one if you need it. This on the bottom, this on the top, this on the bottom, this on the top, but the ones don't count, they go away. So you have four X on top. He crossed out, he crossed out. Sine X is left over. Well, there you go. This is why I changed it, because the way I had it didn't come out this way. Again, take the numbers in front of the X's. That is the rule. But that's upside down. It works if it's upside down. That's the cool thing about that. It, it works if it's upside down. It's, it, it doesn't matter. It's a reciprocal, right? I mean, if, if, if the rule was this, I mean, people, people don't like this, but like th this is the original rule. I gave you this. But if I flip it upside down like that, this one here is the same exact, except it's flipped, right? One, the negative one, right? The negative one power means you flip it over. It's the reciprocal. But this is equal to, this, this was equal to one. So if you flip one, you get one. So that's the point. It doesn't matter whether you have it flipped or not. You still take the numbers in front of the letters. It doesn't change. It doesn't affect it. So. That's it, all right? So that's the last one I'm gonna do. I know they're tricky, but again, the vast majority of the time you can just plug in and it works. The other vast majority of the time, it's this rule. Don't let this rule bother you. I mean, some of you do some really wacky shit and you're just making it way too complicated. Just take the numbers in front of X. You're not crossing the X's out. You're not putting the number in the front. I mean, you can, you, what you cannot do is tell me, you know, if you had sign four X over X, this four cannot go in the front of that. This is complete bullshit. You know, you have the sine of the angle four X. That is not the same as four times the sine of the angle X. That's, that's mathematically garbage. So if I see you do shit like this, it's gonna get marked wrong. And you say, but I got the right answer. The answer is four, I put four. If you write bullshit to get the answer four, it's wrong, all right? I cannot allow you to write garbage even if you somehow have a right answer there with it. Okay, the work has to be correct and justified a lot. And there isn't much justification to do. You know, you pull the numbers off and you do it. All right. So hopefully this helps best I could. I mean, I did a lot of them. So I don't know how long this video is going to be. All right. There you go.